Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I think our uh, Sajid Drums deserves a big round of applause. Hello, those masters and guests. Good evening. I declare meeting number 549. Here's a message. I won't read the secretary's report today. We are not done last time. So start off with the message. It's a message from, I took up from the book uh, You Can Win from Shiv Kera, uh, written by Shiv Kera. Whether it is our thoughts, action or behavior, sooner or later they will turn and they will return and generally they return with great accuracy. Whatever you give, the journey comes back. What I mean is, we need to treat fellow human beings with respect in every interaction that we go through in our daily life. Because it's quite possible that someday the person that we interacted with will meet him down the road and we may have to interact again. The story, uh, many years many years ago, this was uh, somewhere in the early in the end of the 18th century, I guess. Two boys were going through Stanford University. They were very low on their funds, they didn't know how to manage their body and watching and other expenses. So they got this idea. We arrange a piano concert. And for that we call one of the best pianists in the country at the time, a person by name Fedorovsky, who hailed from Poland. And they thought that through this they could raise some funds and with that they'll be able to pay out all their dues and also maintain their life. And so they talked to this man, they talked to a secretary, the bank said you need to pay $2,000 for his appearance. They said okay, I think we can manage that. And they set out to collect funds for this event. Finally they could manage around $1,600, they were shot by $400. The concert happened, Mr. Petrovsky came, he delivered, everyone was happy. And then they had to give Mr. Petrovsky the bad news. He couldn't collect enough funds. So right now, this is what I have, $1,600. So they wrote a promissory note. Somehow, we will try and collect the remaining $400 and give it to you as soon as possible. And Mr. Petrovsky looked at them and said, that won't do. He took the promissory note, he threw it up. He took the $1,600, he gave it in their hands, and he said, With this, you pay off all your expenses that you incurred for this concert. With the remaining money, each of you take 10%. And whatever is left over from that, you give that to me. That's all. So the years went by. The World War I came and went. And this, Pedros, this Mr. Pedrosky became the Premier of Poland. And after the World War I, the country was in great food shortage and uh, people were starving in this country. And the only person who would help him at that time was a person by the name Herbert Kuhl, who was in charge of the US Food and Relief Bureau. So Kuhl responded. And he sent thousands of dollars, uh, thousands of tons of food to Poland. So once Mr. Podrowski saw that everybody was well fed, he went to Paris where Mr. Hoover came. He went to Paris and said, thank you for your help. That student, that person, Mr. Hoover said, you may not remember it, but you helped me once when I was a student in college. He was one of the students. Ralph Waldo, Ralph, uh, sorry, I'm Christian. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, it is one of the most beautiful compensations of life that no man can sincerely try to help another man without actually helping himself. If you help another in some direct or indirect way, you're helping yourself. At Toastmasters, the constant encouragement and camaraderie that you see. 
I believe it was built into the scheme of things by Mr. Ralph C. Smedley. And I believe he thought this is the only way this organization will grow. So this constant encouragement keeps this organization going like a, like a well-oiled machine, you might say. So for that, long live those pastors in Russia. To take this meeting forward, we have one such trust person who I believe has grown in leaps and bounds actually. When I saw him first, I noticed that he was confident in, uh, in the stage and in delivering his speeches. But there was this, the word wouldn't come out fluently. And then as days went by and as he played more and more goals, I saw that the speech also started coming out much better. <coughs> As a leader, he's a he's an entrepreneur, he's an entrepreneur, and at Sunshine, he's played so many roles already and contributed in so many ways in keeping this club going like a well-oiled machine, like I said earlier. Please join me in welcoming the assistant leader of Sunshine Toastmasters, Mr. Devaka Reddy.